Fallen Angels, Hell on Earth. All right, so this morning, Holy Spirit gave me, gave me a bone. And it started me on a different, a different, um, certainly on, on Fallen Angels, but in a different way. So we're going to come at this, you know, the, we can come at the Fallen Angel um, understanding through so many angles, right? So we are in the dominion of fallen angels. And it is these guys that we're told in Ephesians 6, 12. Let's read that. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So it's not about other people, mortal humans. We don't wrestle against them, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So a principality is a governing body of angels, which could be in the millions. And actually in Enoch, I read it could be in an innumerable. You can't even count it. Those principalities, powers, or even larger military body of angels. Now you have to understand, angels are warriors. God created his military Right? They're, they're created for war. That's all they know is war. And there's very organized, uh, innumerable amount of angels in each of these ranks in their military. So look, what we got, what do we have here? P principality is a rank. Powers are a rank. So rulers are a rank of darkness. We are in their world of darkness and their spiritual wickedness is over our head 24/7 365 days a year. You don't you don't get out of this unless you have the Holy Spirit in you. So I wanted to look at something. This is the bone that I was throwing this morning. Colossians 2 14 and 15, 16, 17, 18. We're going to read a little bit out of Colossians 2 right now. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made it a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So I just want to stop right there and understand what we're reading. What Paul is saying here is he understood Roman law of the day. And when you were thrown in jail, whatever law you broke, that was written out. Let's say it's on parchment. But that was written out. So whether it was one law, two laws, however many law or laws you broke, that is right outside your cell door. So you have to look all day long at that parchment that's at your cell door about what you did wrong, about what law you broke. And you looking at that every day until you're taken out and brought, you know, for, for judgment and sentencing. So what Christ is saying is here, that parchment was in front of his cell. And when he was taken out of his cell and, and, and brought out for sentencing, he brought that paper with him. And he nailed that paper to the cross. And what he's showing here, he's showing what he knows, the rulers of this world. He understands that the principalities and powers, he understands that there is an evil army of millions, if not billions, of angels watching this. And what did he do? He made a show of it. He made a show of it. He nailed his laws that he broke to the cross saying, I am releasing everybody from all of their sin by my grace, by my blood today. You, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna capture any of my people. I have released my people on this cross today with my blood I have released them. You do not have hand or hold over them as they did 
before Jesus. So you see what, what, what we're seeing here is so easy to gloss over. When I read Colossians 2.15, I understood immediately because I'm immersed in this knowledge and understanding of these fallen angels and how they rule this world and how little is being said about it. And that's why my mission is every day to get up and find out more. Find out more, go deeper, go deeper. You know, and the Holy Spirit knows this. And the Holy Spirit needs this understanding because we're coming in a time of such great wickedness that we're not going to be able to discern. So I hope this helps with your discernment. Now let's read it again, okay? Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, right? Roman law, handwriting on a piece of paper that was against us, which was contrary to us. So I hope you have ears to hear what I'm, what I'm saying right now. And took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Before he was nailed to the cross, he took this. He, this is a show to the rulers, the powers, the principalities of the air. This is a show to them. I, I defeat you here and now. You will not win my people. Having spoiled principalities and powers, those are ranks, armies of angels. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Now let's move on. Colossians um, 16, verse 16, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones. Now he's, now he's talking to other ranks, you know, classification of angels. Whether they be thrones... Or dominions. So, so principality and powers are like, if you think about this as layers, right over our head. Like there can be a principality over your house, over your neighborhood, over your village, whatever. And then above that is a power. Now he's addressing the thrones and the dominions. Do you see the layering here? I mean... <laughs> it's thick and it's dark, guys. All right, let's finish that. That are in the earth. He's telling you. They once were in heaven. They're still in heaven. He's got two-thirds of them in heaven. Two-thirds remained holy and faithful. One-third became proud, as Satan did, and chose to go away from God. They'll never be redeemed, ever. So now, that that are in heaven... All right, so he made all of the ranks of angels. Father God, Jesus, made all the ranks of angels. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible. We cannot see what's over our head, guys. We cannot see this. I can see it. And I'm telling you, the thickness and the darkness of it is, well, I don't go outside. You hear me say that on every video. <laughs> I know the Holy Spirit and, and a thousand holy angels are in my little space right here right now, praising Jesus and singing songs to him. I'm not want, I don't want to do anything to do with, you know, the sky, the sun, the moon, none of it. Anyways, let's finish this out. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. So he's saying, you know, I've defeated you. I've come for my people. And one day I'll be coming back for you. For your final punishment. Um, moving on. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. Don't worship these angels. They are little G gods. And that throughout the entire Old Testament, that's all everybody is doing is they're making statues. It's called idols. And they're practicing in idolatry. This brought down all of the great kings, right? You don't worship angels. Whether you want to call them an angel or little G god, Zeus, Apollo, I don't care what name you give them. It's an angel. It's a little G god. It's superior to you. And it is ruling over you. And we're being told here, 
voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, and intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. You're going to need to, with the Holy Spirit, sit with this passage right here in Colossians and understand what we're being told. I can only take it so far, but I'm just pointing this out. This is an incredibly important and the war that is on us and the war that is coming. Because if you don't understand the spiritual warfare that is coming at us, coming at us each individually, um, it's just going to be really, really difficult to fight that which you do not know. You're just going to be kind of blindly enslaved to the slaughter. Whatever that slaughter is, uploading your consciousness to the beast system AI, whatever it is, your soul is headed in one of two directions. Are you in charge? Are you knowledgeable about which direction your soul is headed? Because you're going to be hypnotically entranced in this walkabout that each of us are going to be going on. All right, so I hope you understand that we have principalities, powers, rulers, thrones, dominions um, over your house, and then take that to every layer you want to take it. County, city, states, country, and continents, right? So you've got it from just this, the smallest little patch of, you know, uh, of earth that you're on, you're in your house, and then you take that and you add every known thing that there is and how many layers that is. That is an op oppressive, um, I should say that's the, the blanketed oppression that these warrior angels, who, by the way, hate humans. That's why they fell, because they hate humans. They said, no way. We want to be worshipped. We are superior we are the elder race and we should be worshiped, right? They hate humans because angels are made to be in charge over us. That means to watch over us, protect us, intervene, give us messages from time to time. Humans are told you don't ever worship an angel. Father God made angels to, to take care over us, to have charge over us. That's why they fell, guys. They hate you with a passion that they're willing to spend their eternity in fire. That's the kind of hate they have for humans. This needs to be super clear because your church is lying to you. But they're not telling you this. It's because they've been groomed. They have been, since the beginning of seminaries, these angels have been grooming exactly what you know, understand, and will speak of in God's holy book. And talking about them is forbidden. You hear any churches talking about it? So, basically, um, they want our souls. And we're going to end today's video in Ezekiel, which tells us about that. So, they want your souls forever, right? They've created this matrix. They've created a video game. That's what it is. If you don't believe you're in an angelic video game, then it's going to be really hard to convince you otherwise when it comes time for you to make that decision. It's a matrix. It's a virtual reality. It's a video game, and it's about to get more than real. Right now, it's an illusion, and you're, you're easily tripped up and distracted by it. But... Oh my goodness, is this game going to get really real <laughs> any day now? That's why Holy Spirit literally drags me out of bed at five this morning and said, you know, get on this phone. And so every day I just get a deeper understanding into this. But how, how are they programming us? All right. They're doing it through whether you want to call it a little screen on your phone to the big screen, uh, Holly, you know, your, your phone, your computer, your TV, your movie theaters, up to your 3D screens. Here's how they're programming us. You know, we are watching all of their programming. It's un The symbolism at this point is so uh, just in your face over the top as to be laughable. So it's on there. It's on the screens. It's in all the music 
that you're listening to, all the lyrics, right? There's no there's no lyrics that don't that don't have angel agenda. Um, we're wearing their symbolism on all of our clothes all the time. The symbolism is everywhere. I just want to stop here and point out, and I'm going to speak more about it in a minute here, but angel symbolism is different from satanic symbols. Okay, there's the whole church of Satan. That's like a different thing, right? The angels broke off, divide and conquer. The angels broke off and they have their own symbols. So, you know, it's bad enough trying to beat the satanic stuff, but now we have the dark evil angel symbolism because it's the angels, because of the multitude of them, that's got all of their puppets. They're in direct contact. They can, they can transform as a human and they can run the show behind the scenes. They can eat with you, they can drink with you, they can have sex with you, right? That's what you've got to understand the supernatural ability of these guys. All right, so what are their symbols? You know, we're, we're, we're wearing them on our clothes, they're on our jewelry. Um, you know, the, the, the angel stuff is just a different agenda. I'm never gonna get into the satanic stuff. I don't want to, I'm not gonna go down that path, but there's tons of that information out there. But there isn't enough, everybody decides to focus on Satan, except the church, the church doesn't. I don't think the church any, you know, any longer believes that there's Satan. But, um, but the church will not focus on the fallen evil angels. Millions, millions, just like there's millions of spirits of antichrist, but these angels are real. They're immortal and they can transform as humans and walk among us. Tells you, tells you about the strangers walking among us in the body or in the Bible, sorry. All right, so they do, they are the ones that are piloting, if you want to call them ancient astronauts, piloting the UFOs, the UAPs, it's all angelic tech. Okay, their symbol. Let's get into angel, uh, just a few of their symbols. Their main symbol is the lotus flower. Is that surprising? The lotus flower. But they'll usually knock the lotus flower down to three petals. So when you see three petals of the lotus flower, uh, in other words, look at Mercedes symbol. That's an angelic symbol. When you see three petals inside of a sphere, so they have one of their symbols, of course is wings, they're always gonna use wings, but they use the wings on either side of a sphere, or they'll use the, lot the three symbols of a lotus flower inside a sphere, or, and with wings. The best one is there's a new new line of cards. I had to go onto Google and look it up because I never even heard of it. It's unbelievable. The the symbol for the car, the, the line of cars called Genesis. Now that's that's almost in your face laughable too. They actually call, they actually say Genesis. You know, that's the fall. Genesis. And it has a sphere with wings. So if you want to understand angel symbolism, YouTube, you know, a, a commercial for Genesis cars. Uh, Mercedes, you can see that really well. Mercedes has been around forever. Now, another one of their main symbols when it comes to the screen, when it comes to watching their programming, what they're going to use for their programming, and I mean this is set up, is everywhere. Think of the, the, the uh, look at their architecture. Everywhere in their architecture, they have these gigantic pillars, like literally pillars, columns. Think Rome, right? And Rome has these 40-foot columns that today the buildings are gone, but the columns still stand. The columns, also known as pillars, right? If you look at, if you start under, with this, with this lens now, every time you're watching anything, as a scene sets up and starts to play out, I mean, it can be as simple as, the, the columns, the, the pillars, once you have an eye for this, you're never going to see a scene that doesn't have columns and pillars in it. And it doesn't actually look like the Roman column. Sometimes it does, but it can come through in, in how they'll take somebody standing at a door, and I'll, you'll see the door frame on either side of them in a different color. You know, And now they're going to go, they've always been using blue and red as their main colors. Now they're going to go towards blue to a light green. 
blue to a hunter green to a light green. That's going to be their new coloring coming in because of how they're changing our blood, how they're changing our DNA. They want to add a third strand to our DNA. And while I'm not going to get off too much on a, on a, about that right now, I'm going to do a video on that about um, how it talks about our DNA being changed and not to do it. Anyway, but for today, I wanted to talk more about their symbolism and where we're headed towards this hive mind. So now that you understand pillars and column, try to find anything that's modern, you know, made in the last, I don't know, three years, let's say, that every scene set up has pillars behind them. Always look at the background. Don't pay attention to what's in the forefront. Look at the background. Look at the setting. You're going to see the pillars everywhere. It's there all the time. Of course, trees. I don't, I don't think I need to tell you about the trees. Trees are us. Um, and so you're going to see it, uh, trees are us that are alive, good, green, healthy trees. And around those good green, you'll see trees that are pale, a light green or dead. That's, that's them versus us. So them and us is that it's everywhere. And the early programming is red and blue. And you'll see everything just like right here with these books, red and blue. You'll see everything is red and blue. Now it's going to blue, green to light green, pale green and living trees and vines and bushes and dead trees, vines and bushes. You saw that big time in what's the blockbuster right now, the menu? Look at the, look at the staging, the background of that. Now I couldn't sit through the whole movie. I could only watch 30 minutes of it, enough to see the dead trees and then I left after that. Um, but I'm just looking at the programming at this point. Okay, so the pillars, let's go back to the pillars. What they're doing they always have to counterfeit or mimic God, right? So we know Father God, because um, he was a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of clouds by day. That's why they're doing that. They're act, you have to know they're acting as gods, and they are little G gods, and they represent themselves behind humans all the time as these 40 foot, that's no surprise, right? You understand what four means? As these 40 foot columns. Okay, let's read Exodus 13, 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light that they, may, they, that they might travel by day and by night. So do you see how they'll take this um, and they'll mimic this in the end and people will be supernaturally afraid in fear and yes, we will worship and follow. Because the supernatural that has been so invisible, it's been a silent, subtle programming, conditioning, and grooming. It's going to come on the surface, and you are going to be, because of things like this, you'll remember in your Bible, oh, wait, didn't, didn't Father God lead them by clouds, pillars of clouds and pillars of smoke? Do you see the deceit? Do you see how they can move things cleverly around? That's what I'm trying to point out. I'm trying to think of all of the ways that these guys will mimic Father God and lead you astray. That's the purpose. That's my that's my life's mission at this point going forward. It's like I'm gonna I'm gonna find every little thing that Father God did in the Bible and see how they will mimic and counterfeit it, and the masses will not know the difference. You know, for my children will die due to their ignorance. The fallen angels know that about you as well. Trust me, they know the Bible better than any human on planet Earth ever. All right, so from there, let's go to 1 Timothy 3.15. If I delay, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, a pillar and a buttress of the truth. So keep in mind that pillar. Let's also look at Nehemiah 9.12. By a pillar of cloud, you led them in the day, and by a pillar of fire in the night, to light for them the way in which they should go. Now in Deuteronomy 12.3, we read what Father God will do with these fallen, counterfeit, mimicking evil angels. So ready? Deuteronomy 12.3. And ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves, trees, with fire. And ye shall who down the graven images of their gods and destroy the names of them out of that place. Okay, now let's look at Joel 
2, verse 30, And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Let's jump down to Revelation 10, 1. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. So, let's get to how this all started with the evil angel called Azazel. There is nothing more important than for any church to teach is on these guys, all right? But the church has been groomed and conditioned out of any interest in fallen angels. Now, what the church will talk about from time to time is the Nephilim. Who cares about the Nephilim, guys? Okay, and after that, yeah, there's some Nephilim stuff that survived the flood. But the Nephilim in Genesis 6, they came down, they, they, angels, angels came down, watch your angels came down under the uh, chief, chief angel, Semyaze. And Azazel was first, and Semyaze brought 200 of them down. And the, they, they took wives, they made it with them, they had offsprings, the offsprings are called Nephilim, which are also known as giants. Giants are throughout the Old Testament. Um, the giants made it with everything. For that reason, Father God sent a flood and only saved Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives, and the animals, right? But it says, and after that. So Nephilim carried over. That's not what we're talking about. Those angels are chained in gloomy darkness in Jude 1.9. All right, go read that. I, I don't care about the watcher angels, but everybody's attention today is on these watcher angels. I don't know why, because they're chained in gloomy darkness. Yes, and after that, that seed line exists. And that, with that seed line, you got fallen angels came down and started their little hybrid program because they know how to mingle seeds. Daniel tells us we'll be mingling seeds. So, see, it's, it's this other original fallen angels, they could have fell millions or billions of years prior to watchers. We don't know. There's no way to know that. Okay, but they, they've been around eons, scores of time before humans ever got here. They know the human psychology and the human emotion and the human heart better than humans do. They know how to manipulate and control you better than you will ever figure out. We're not that smart. They are superior in intellect. They are superior in every way. And it is only the Holy Spirit of Father God that you're going to make it through this. So what did Azazel teach? Well, of course, he taught war. I read in another video, and I don't even remember the name of the video now, but I read to you their playbook. They have a playbook. They have, they have millions of people, they have an organized army, and they need a playbook. And their playbook, in their first um, chapter, in their Bible, I call it a playbook because I don't want to use the word Bible for them, but they have a counterfeit Bible, right? A counterfeit, let's call it playbook. So when you hear me say playbook, you know what I'm talking about. They have a playbook. And in their playbook, let's call patriotism war. And let's kill one another because we are patriotic about our, our country. They literally used our, I guess I would say, our faithfulness to being a patriot against us. And they made us start killing other people because we were patriots. They use pa patriots. You need, to, you need to understand that in today's language because today's language, they're doing it again. They're dividing and conquering us conquering us through the understanding and the knowledge that we have of being a good patriot. That is their string they're pulling on us now. And man, the, the division is so deep. It's, it's cutting so deep that the patriotism movement is what will destroy us because we don't understand how they're using it against us. I already did a video on that. I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to pull up their playbook today. All right. I had to cleanse myself from that. But I've done that. Go find that video. The first one was Azazel. He came in and he taught metallurgy. How to make swords. 
how to make knives, how to make shields, right? The big shields and their breastplates. They gave mortals, men, understanding of metals of the earth, how to extract it, how to use it, how to form it, how to shape it, not only in materials for war, but also for ornamental because of pride. You got to understand fancy jewelry, be it bre uh, necklaces, bracelets, earrings. We are told, do not do that. We have to look at all these things in the Bible where it's like, this is what we're doing and this is how we're being told. Don't do that. You know, <laughs> Father God has to keep coming in every time one of these fallen angels give us new tech. And it's like, don't do that, guys. Come on now. Look at, look at the bigger picture. Get outside of your little world of distractions and look. Look, I'm telling you, it's right here. It's in one book. All right. I know the book is thick, but I'm giving it to you in sound bites here. So they taught him how to make jewelry. And more importantly, after that, they taught makeup. Makeup, how to paint the eyes, how to paint the eye, you know, the eyebrows, the eyelids. Tells you throughout the Bible, you know, don't do that. So they, 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 they uh, taught how to make color tinctures, tinctures of color. Again, it's all about ornamental, adorning thyself, i.e. pride. It's about making yourself superior, more beautiful, more sought after over somebody else. Women who could afford these colorful cloaks, whatever you want to call it, scarves, whatever, and painting of the eyes and wearing jewelry and pearls and all of that, all of that is, Father God says, don't do it. You are to be humble. Do not put together this prideful look. Well, the angels want that. The angels want these. That, that's why we have all the idols we have today. Everybody loves their movie stars and their rock stars and look at themselves. They, 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 they wear all this glitter, right? We go after shiny things. Come on, don't be a crow, right? Crows go after shiny things. You're better than that. All right, so what does it tell us? Let's just go to, go to the living word. What does it say? First Peter 3, 3 and 4. 1 Peter 3, 3 and 4. Do not let your adorning be external. The braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear. But let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. Wow. It's, it's right there, guys. It's right there. Are you, are you understanding how the angels are trying to make us like them and to follow them and how we love that? How that, that shiny thing is so, we're so vulnerable to it. It's, it's much harder to be humble, isn't it? Humility, that's, that's, that's a tough one, right? We want to keep up with the Joneses or the Kardashians or whatever today's reality show is. I don't know, I'm not in this world. Now we know this is all true, all right? We know this is true, that this happened, because in 2 Chronicles 2, 7, we read, um, send me now, therefore a man, cunning to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in iron and in purple and crimson and blue, and that can skill to grave with the cunning men that are with me in Judah and Jerusalem, whom David, my father, did provide. There it is. Sums that right up. All right, now what do we have next? After Azazel taught all of this, now we have the teaching of charms, right? Enchantments, the cutting of roots, sorceries um, came um, next. The casting of spells the binding of spells, then necromancy, right? That's talking to the dead. Um, then astronomy, the understanding of the movement and phases of the moon, the sun, the eclipses, right? Um, and from there, we have astrology came after that, the understanding of astrology and our, our life according to the stars and the planets and the sun and the moon. And in the Bible, it doesn't say the word astrology. It says the word observer of times. 
So now you understand what you're reading in Deuteronomy uh, when it says observer of times, but also charmers, whatever the snake charmers are. I don't know what, what would the purpose of snake charming, but they had that. Um, it also says a consultant of familiar spirits, right? Today we call that a psychic or a medium. Um, so you can read all of this for yourself in Deuteronomy 18, verse 10 to 13. I'm not going to read that. Just go ahead. Deuteronomy 18, verse 10 to 13. So we have all this knowledge since we got here by these fallen angels who rule over us. And the church is doing exactly as they are told by the dark lords, right? Lord, number 3068. You know that when I put together a video, I've already gone through the concordance on all of these numbers. I, I, I already know, you know, a deeper understanding than what I'm putting out there. So, but I just encourage you, if you're going to read the Bible, read it with a concordance. So these dark lords do not reveal us to us, right, to the churches, how to protect yourself from, from them. This is the reason we are following the course of their world, gleefully ignorant, right? We're zealously ignorant that they exist because we are so groomed and entertained by them and their satanic rituals at all of our sporting events, right? You don't go to a sporting event and there's not a satanic ritual going on or a concert or the Olympics. Uh, look at that bail ceremony on the Commonwealth Games that was done this past, what was it, June in the UK? I was so angered by that. I don't know why every single Christian didn't stand up and shake their hands at that. I mean, I, you know, I just don't get where the, the dumbing down and not, not, not even any of the churches, any of the, no one complained about that. Baal worship. That was like a 40 foot bull and it's still in their town square. People taking selfies with it. That's how dumbed down we've gotten. And it's, it's not funny. There's nothing to laugh about that. So we just go along with worshiping them, giving them all of our attention, giving them all of our time, all of our money. We wear their symbols. We drive their cars. Now, I can tell you right now I'm writing this on an Apple computer. I mean, how much more in your face is the symbol of a bitten apple? Come on, right? A bitten apple. <laughs> this is how they got us to fall in the first place. And the best technology we have today, at least in my opinion, Apple computer, Apple period, you know, I, I'm talking to you on an iPhone. I'm talking to you through a fallen angel technology and a fallen angel, um, you know, devices. I don't know how to use anything else because when I got my first computer, it was an Apple. I don't, I don't know how to use anything else. doesn't matter. Whatever computer you have is still fallen. There's nothing in this world that's not fallen angel. But I'm just saying, how in your face is a bitten apple? Who couldn't figure that out way back when, when it came to be, what, what, at whatever time period? They have taught us every act of evil they can drum up. They consume this world. There's no thing they have not corrupted with the church being their biggest puppet. They never talk, the church never talks about the real world we are in. The Bible has more about what not to do, especially idolatry. There is no way to be in and of this world and not partake in idolatry. The angels know that. They have, they have got us to the point of no return, literally. So unless you just never buy anything, if you just stayed in your home or your tent or your cave and you just read the Bible 24-7, um, if that were to happen, it, 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 this world would cease to exist. If we said, we're not going to, you know, partake of your world, well, it would stop spinning. And that's what they wanted. They wanted to, they, well, they wanted to see that. So they had their trial run with us in 2020. They needed to see, or should I say, they needed to take a head count, right, with their satellites. If you don't think they have satellites up there, well, they have UFOs. Why would you not think they have a satellite system? Their satellites was taking a head count of how complacent, how much of our programming we call media, how big has our lie matured into the total takeover of the hive mind system has been installed into place. 
If you think that hive mind system doesn't exist, you're not paying attention. They can see right now how many busybody bees, that's us. That's what they call us. They call us bees. Go find that in the Bible. I've already done videos on that. How many busybody bees are buzzing mindlessly about under their drag queen, right? They're, now, we're not just going to have a queen of a hive. She's going to be a drag queen. Drag queen existence, and now they know we have reached critical mesmeration. Is that a word? Mesuration? We are mesmerized, right? A critical number of us are mesmerized. A period of time in which the masses now worship the blind, I should say, the blind, masked up, dumbed down majority would rather take their poison darts and change their DNA into a insectolin, snake-like zombie race due to fear that they have instilled in 99% of the souls on the planet. They got to see that. Their, their satellites watched all of that. They have won. They know that. Time for part two, second stage. Now they understand how many are willing, right? How many are willing to enter into the hive mind, beast system of cyber Satan. If you don't think we're headed to cyber Satan, you're not paying attention. You're too distracted. Wake up. Hello, wake up. Hive mind, beast system of cyber Satan to live forever in their avatar bodies, in their tiny house, which means a cube, to live forever in their avatar cube, in their cubes, which they can create their reality every day, day by day. New Age have been telling you that. You're going to ascend into one mind, hive consciousness. So the New Age literature left out little things like the hive mind or one mind. It's just the ascension. Yeah, you're going to ascend into a cube, that's true, into a cloud, into a computer-generated cloud. Bible warns you about that. There's two clouds. The cloud Father God, Jesus is coming on, and the other one. You're making your choice right now today. So you're, any time now, step two rolls out, and the reality is, um, you're going to have a choice to go into the cube of the beast system and the great phoenix in the sky. Today we call it the metaverse. Yeah, you're going to go into the great phoenix in the sky called the metaverse. The proof of them being here, running everything, is all around you. The lies of our history, it's there to be discovered. People are doing that now. I've, I saw some videos, you know, once I do break free and watch a little bit of something because of programming, I can see people out there doing videos on architecture that's been left behind and how they discover, you know, the lies of our history and just the architecture alone. You can see, you can see fallen angel tech everywhere. Oh, great pyramid. That's theirs. But the rapid speed of their tech that they have ushered us in the last 100 years, think about it. For 6,000 years, there's basically no advancement that much other than architecture in the last hundred years look where we are in 100 years okay if if you can't see that and now the narrative in the mainstream media is ufos and oh by the way they're not humans in those they're they're evolved space brothers they're not human they're dimensional travelers that's what the narrative is now. They're dimensional travelers. They can fly in and out of different dimensions. They're higher evolved beings. Well, yeah, they are higher evolved beings. They were made millions of years before us, maybe billions, who knows? But they are an elder race. They were made before the earth, before the foundation of earth. They were in existence before the foundation of the earth. So we go to these large conferences and we give them, you know, we worship them at these 5D Ascension conferences. That's a worship of fallen angels. You're worshiping fallen dark angels. They're going to be called Pleiadians. They're going to have, they're going to have special, pretty shiny names. Pleiadians, Arcturians, Nordics. And they're going to be channeling their messages of come with us. 
We're going to take you, we're going to ascend. We're going to take you into the ascension. We're going to take you into enlightenment. There's going to be divine oneness. Yeah, there will be of one mind. There will be divine oneness. Hive mind and the B system. They've been, they've been conditioning you so that you silently compliant, complacently go into the hive mind. Go busy bees. And everyone, 99% of the planet, unfortunately, will hypnotically walk on board of their beautiful spheres as they begin to hover, hover over the cities. You want to see that programming? Look up Nicolas Cage movie, Knowing. Just watch the end. So we got to wrap this up with Ezekiel. So I'm just telling you, um, we got to look at the Bible and look at what, what's going to happen here. What all the programming is telling you, you can guarantee, you can count on this because they can't, they're not creative, okay? They're not creative. They got to do it this way. The metaverse is going to roll out with uploading your consciousness to a cloud, a computer network of a self-replicating, self-healing graphene oxide. Okay, watch Moonfall if you want to see that. Self-replicating, self-healing graphene oxide, strongest material on earth, uh, magnetically connected, um, like a hive mind, and you will transform out of a mortal human because, I mean, who wants to be a mortal human? You, you, you frail, stupid human. Who wants that? No, we want human 2.0. We want to be immortal, all right? So that's where we're going. We're going to immortal. Um, we're going to be better than a human. We're going to be a superhero. We're going to be stronger than any human on it. We're going to be like the angels. We are going to be like the angels. Now for me, I see this kind of, uh, I just want to say language. I see it in Ezekiel and I see it in Job. Um, I see it in Isaiah 19. All right. So read Isaiah 19, uh, especially starting at the verse nine and look at that flax, that flax network. All right. Just understand that flat flax network. If you look at graphene oxide, it's a, like a tiling, like a hexagonal tiling system and it's black um, but here let's go read Ezekiel let's read Ezekiel thinking about the the language in Ezekiel's day and let's bring that forward a couple thousand years right to the language for us today and see if Ezekiel 13 doesn't make more sense or see if Job 39 doesn't make more sense I'm running out of time here um, but I just want you to think is Ezekiel 13, Job 39, Isaiah 19. Let's go. Let me, let me just start. I'm going to start in Ezekiel 13, 13. I, I suggest you read it all, but we're running short. So Ezekiel 13, 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury, and there shall be an overflowing shower in mine anger and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. All right, here I think if you if you look at chronology, here I, I'm kind of seeing this could be Revelation eight verse seven, the great hailstones. So we could, if you're thinking about in our timeline, Christians are now gone. The wrath. This is the trumpets, right? Revelation eight uh, verse seven starts the first trumpet. I don't know how anybody, how anybody survived once you get to the first trumpet, and I think the only way you can survive. This is my lens, okay. The only way you can survive is that you've been uploaded because here on earth, when these trumpets go off and these bowls start pouring out, which could be at the same time, it, you're not, there are not many people surviving that. And if you know it's coming, if the angels have now visibly come down and said, Hey, look, Lord God's going to do this. You're going to be really upset that Lord God wants to destroy you. And you're going to believe the angel agenda and you're going to go. I'm just saying, let's look at Ezekiel what seems to be some strange language, and let's think about today. Let's put it into context today. This is my lens, guys. This is my lens. I didn't go to seminary. Thankfully, I have not been groomed, okay? I just have uh, critical thinking skills. I'm able to think, which the young generation cannot. They couldn't count back change. They couldn't read a non-digital clock if their life depended on it. Critical thinking skills are no longer required. We live in a digital age. You got Google. And calculators, you don't need to think for yourself. You got GPS. You don't even know if your home is south or west or east or north from where you're standing right now. If you're in a shopping mall, you have no idea what direction to go because you got GPS to do that for you. Do you see how the angels will use this digital age to completely take all 
thinking skills, and for that matter, all argument. You, you can't think well enough to even argue what they're saying. You're just going to follow, right? That's why I've never, I've never come into the digital world. I don't have GPS on my phone. You know, I don't, I, I, I count back change. I mean, this is unbelievable. All right, Ezekiel 13, 14. So I will break down the wall that ye have dubbed, daubed with untempered mortar. You have to go back and read the first 12 verses of Ezekiel to understand what's being said there. I don't have time for that. I want you to read it for yourself and think. He's saying here, you have a wall that's been daubed and untempered mortar. Not a real house, not a foundation, not bricks and mortar. You have something other than that. You have a consciousness perhaps in a cloud, perhaps no longer in a body. Do you see what I'm saying here? Now let's read it with that, that context. Let's look at where we're going in the digital age. And you may not have a house to be in because if you've, if you've actually survived to Revelation 8, 7, that when all the mountains are out of their places and all the islands are out of their places, I don't know how there's any buildings left. Somehow you have to have survived in some temporary condition. Okay, let's read on. Verse 14, untempered mortar, and bring it down to the ground so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered and it shall fall and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof and ye shall know that I am Lord. Now it could be talking about what I'm talking about, but I can also see, I can also see this is the third temple that's going to be taken down. Either way, do you see what I'm saying? The, the Antichrist has a short time. He's going to build the third temple. And it could be very um, not well built because in such a short time, it's going to be taken down. But we, ha we have to look at this from every kind of, in, in knowing what we know today, in our context, in our language, what can this be telling us? Is there multiple things it's telling us? Well, Father God can talk in multiple ways, can he not? Verse 15. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall. Okay, his, he, the great wrath is here, right? Trumpets are blowing, I believe, at this point. Um, I will accomplish my great wrath upon the wall and upon them that have dubbed it with untempered mortar. And will say unto you, the wall is no more, neither they that dubbed it. To wit, the prophets of Israel, which prophesy concerning Jerusalem and which see visions of peace, for her, and there is no peace, saith the Lord God. This is the three and a half year, the first three and a half years could be right here, right? The first three and a half years, all of the, at least for the Jews, they're going to believe that there is peace, their Savior has come, that the Messiah is here, and they're, and, and they're, uh, you know, got a veil over their eyes because the Lord is saying there's no peace, you know, just because there's three and a half years of something happy happening. You know, uh, you, the wrath is coming. Verse 17, Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against thy daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. And say, thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the women that sew pillows to all armholes, and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Will ye hunt the souls of my people? Will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? Okay, we're hunting souls now. Now, what's this women that sew pillows to all armholes and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls? I'm going to pull up the concordance. Okay, so I'm going to look at armhole, which just means joint. I'm going to look at kerchief. Kerchief means a long layer or covering. Uh, to me, what I see there right away is Isaiah 19.9. A network of flax, graphene oxide. Pillow. Um, pillow means a band. Covered amulets, false phylacteries. Um, and that meaning of phylacteries is used by false prophetess in Israel to support their demonic fortune-telling schemes. Wait, what? We got something demonic. <laughs> so who would have thought pillow means that? A band, and I want you to think of band um, as you read other parts of Ezekiel, as you read Job, yeah, for sure, uh, some in Isaiah, um, there's going to be this network, this flax finely woven network. And these demonic fortune-telling women 
are going to be who are teaching you, right? You're going to be listening to them. How are you going to get away from that? If that's all of the messages you have, because we know at some point there'll be no word of Father God in the land, period. It will be a famine. Let's see here. Verse 19. And will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread? Do you see here how you're begging for food? They're going to starve you to follow them. Okay, let's reread that. Pollute me among my, pollute me among my people. Okay, they're going to be talking bad. This is the Antichrist is here and he's telling you, look, that God of yours, that creator, he's coming to destroy you and you're going to follow him to safe and peacey, uh, safe, <laughs> peace and safety. Sorry. Um, so pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die. And save the souls alive that should not live. Do we see a reversal? Good for evil, evil for good. By your lying to my people that hear your lies. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against your pillows. Wherewith I am against your false prophetess. That's what pillows mean. False prophets. With their dem demonic sayings. I am against your pillows, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly. And I will tear them from your arms, and I will let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt, to make them fly. For me, in my lens, um, this is uploaded. Make them fly up to a cloud. Upload your consciousness to a cloud. For, give up your mortal human body. Take on the lie of immortality, the lie of the evil angels, up into their devices, Right, their devices, whether it be a cloud, be a UFO, be it the computer AI, be system, this is what I see here you'll be flying into. And very little will be left because they're they're begging for a little bit of barley and pieces of bread. So I, I'm not gonna read uh, let me go ahead and finish out Ezekiel and then we'll end for today. Um verse twenty one, your curf chiefs kerchiefs also will I tear. I see the kerchiefs could be graphene oxide. And deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted. And ye shall know that I am Lord, because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, and whom I have not made sad. Do you see how they're lying about Father God? Everybody thinks that the creator Father God was good and righteous, and he, they're telling you the opposite. They're going to be saying evil is good and good is evil. Okay. It's, it's, to me, it's really clear right here, but read it for yourself. I have not made sad and strengthened the hands of the wicked that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Oh, you understand? He's being promised immortality. He's being promised life. The, 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 the mortal man, the puny human is going to die. If you stay on earth, What's coming, the forecast for you, is Revelation 8, 7. Start there, okay? Go, go down from here to Revelation 8, 7 when the trumpets start blowing and the bowls start pouring out. And they're going to show you that with their magic mirror. They're going to show you that with their looking glass technology. This is what's coming. This is what's coming. They're going to bring down their supernatural tech, and you're going to follow them into their ascended immortality of space-faring of all beings on another planet, whatever, you will lose your soul. Let's end Ezekiel 13 and verse 23. Therefore ye shall see no more vanity nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am Lord. There's some good news there, right? But I just want you to think about where we're headed, what's the plan for today, and, um, you know, we'll, I'll do another video on this with Job. All right, let's go to Job and look at Job's language. It's a little different, but I love it. I can see it. Um, throughout Job, I like Job 39. So we'll, I'll work on that tomorrow. Maybe that's the Holy Spirit bone that I will be thrown tomorrow. 
God loves you and he's doing everything in his power, in his living word to save you, to help you, to encourage you. He's right here. His Holy Spirit's right here. You can be filled with his Holy Spirit and read the Bible in a way that gives you hope and strength and faith. I love you as well. God bless.